my brother Jim saying, we get a lot of memories. Remember George giving that prayer? He was a sermon just from the prayer. I appreciate that, George. Uh, thinking about uh, uh, Brother Dan asked me to introduce the service tonight, and I got to thinking about uh, revivals. One of, the, one of the things that's been in my memory, or uh, what I brings up to my mind occasionally is Jonah. And uh, so I went back and I, 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 I read the book of Jonah several times, did, done some research. And there, there's just uh, a lot of it that we, we need to look at again. I certainly don't want to take much of Jim's time. I just got a little, some things I'd like to just review with you. Uh, Jonah was a uh, prophet of Israel from 800 to 750 B.C. And he was, he was a contemporary with the prophet Amos. And uh, God asked him to go to that wicked city, city Nineveh. He says, I'm going to bring destruction in so many words. I'm going to bring destruction on Nineveh. And you need to go warn them. You know? Nineveh was a wicked place. It, it was a pagan place. The... Uh, the the people there had a reputation of being very cruel, uh, uh, very brutal. Uh, and no doubt, God knew a lot more. But we know when the Assyrians, which Nineveh was the capital city of Nineveh for about 100 years, when they come and took the, uh, the Jewish people captive, they put hooks in their nose and let them. Like animals. They, 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 they were very cruel people. And so... Jonah, when he got the word that God telling him, "Look, I want you to, I want you to go give these people warning," he he ran from him. Uh, he uh, he, uh, I don't know why, what his thinking was. You know, him a prophet, you, you can't run from God, but he did. He wanted to get as far away from Nineveh as he could, so he he took off. He uh, he went to Joppa and headed to Tarshish, which is as far west as in that day and time that he could go in that Mediterranean area. He was trying to get away. So he got on a ship at Joppa. Let me read that first uh, first verse. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Manti. <coughs> I'm not sure how he pronounced that, his father. But go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because this wickedness has come up before him. So for his own reasons, Jonah wanted to get away. And, and so he headed to Tarshish. And he, he was on a ship. And uh, God sent a bad storm. And the ship was about to break up. Uh, and I, I'm very impressed here with what, what happened there on that ship. Uh, these men knew that... And, you know that there was something supernatural about this. That that that, uh, that 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 they they got to look and say who's responsible. And so they drew lots. You know, and the lot came up Jonah. And they said, "What have you done? I mean, what what's 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 this coming on us? What'd you do?" And I, I'm going to read verse uh, uh, Jonah one and nine. He answered, "I'm a Hebrew." And I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. So that that told them that, that that they were really afraid because this is the God that controls that sea. That's why we we're about to lose our lives. So Jonah told them, said, "Look, he said the only way I can see is pick me up and throw me into that ocean." You know. But listen to what these men did. These, you know, they didn't know Jonah. And if I was out on a ship, and I knew how I, I, I was given a way to, to calm that sea and save my life, I'm not sure what I, I would do, you know? But let me show what these, these men did. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land. They grabbed their oars and tried to get back to land so they wouldn't have to sacrifice this man. They didn't want to kill him. And, and, but... But they could not, and the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord. They went to the Lord. They cried to the Lord. 
said, Oh, Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. These were good men. These were men concerned about that guy. He was an innocent man. You know, and here they were in peril. They were about to lose their lives. That'd be, you know, something to think about. But they, they didn't want to do it, but they did. So when they, when they threw him over, things calmed down. In, in verse uh, 16 there in, in, in uh, John 1, it said, at this, at this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord. They went to the Lord. So we're, we're, we're talking revival here. We need to think about, and I'll bring out later a little, little lesson here, that we need to think of the whole scope and how, what, a, what, a, who, what God thinks about. So the Lord made a made, and sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. They vowed. They promised the Lord from times. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And now this is what we hear about a lot when we think of Jonah, is Jonah and that fish. You know, that's, that's what we hear mostly about. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. And I, you know, you hear a lot of science about these people that say, you know, this couldn't be and that couldn't be. Well, yes, it did. That's what God said. He said he, he provided the fish to swallow him. And Jonah was in that fish three days and three nights. So, well, Jonah was in there. He had a prayer, and it, it was a very impressive prayer, starting in verse 2. And I'm going to read the last few words there, or last few verses. Uh, Jonah uh, 2, be 8 through 10. So, uh, in his prayer, and watch while he's in the fish, Jonah prayed, in verse 8, those who cling to worthless idols force them forfeit the grace that could be theirs. I was impressed with that verse. They, you know, they give up that grace that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, and he's in the belly of the fish, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. So the Lord, in verse 10, then the Lord commanded the fish and it bonded Jonah in on the dry land. So so God comes back to Jonah and said, Will you go to Nineveh and preach it against that city? Jonah went at that time. Yeah. He headed he headed to Nineveh. And and, and Nineveh was a was a, uh, uh, a huge city. And I I was reading some of the commentary around it, and it actually it was part of even bigger cities that were all around. There was lots and lots of people there. And and it took, I, I think the way they described it, um, to them a very important city, and it, it required a visit of three days, apparently, to walk through it. Uh, I guess that probably was a big, huge place. And, and here these people are worshiping uh, uh, idols, pagan. I soon never heard of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, they didn't know our God. But what did they do? You know, and then and, and the words are going out to our people in, in our country. What are they doing? You know, I know God sent, sends prophets to his own people. They turned their noses up to them and maybe even killed them. Uh, you know, uh, they, 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 they refused to listen. But listen to what these people did. So, the Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth, which meant mourning. You know, they're worried. They're sorry. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, powerful man. Powerful as anybody could be in the world at that time, maybe this time. Took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. And I think I need to read that to really get the uh, picture here of what he's doing, what Paul was going on. By the decree of the king of his no and his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. 
Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. So, why would, why would this be? I mean, these were people that had no concept of our God, of, 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 of you know, a, a all-knowing, all-living, all-present uh, God. They stopped in their tracks. We're going to believe this man. And, and, they, and they repented. And, and uh, uh, that's always struck me as really a, a, an awesome thing that, that those people would, would do that. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. He was going to do it. He, they, Jonah said, you got 40 days, you know, and, uh, and they turned. Well, Jonah didn't, he didn't think that, that, that they would do that. They were like, he was like me, I said, why would they, you know? So uh, Jonah set up a tent outside the city so he could watch the destruction. He was going to yet see what's going to happen to these people. And uh, in four two, in, in, in verse four two, uh, is is probably the 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 first uh, or the probably one of the hinges on this lesson. It says, "Let me start back at verse one." But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, "O Lord, is this not what I said?" When I was still at home, that is, that is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew, listen to this one, I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love. He didn't want those people saved. He, was, he, he hated them. You know, he wanted them destroyed. A God who relents from sending, from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take my life. Or it's better for me to die than to live. He was so upset that God saved Nineveh. He was willing to die. He wanted to die. And, and he asked to die. I think that something I'm very impressed with in, in, in these few, just to couple of few finishing verses. You know, God, He's bigger than we think sometimes. You know, He loves everybody. He loves all people. Here's what He said. See, Jonah went out there and camped, camped waiting for that city to be destroyed and God sent the vine. He felt, I guess, felt sorry for him. He was out there baking in the sun, and he found a little, you know, a little shelter, and it wasn't much. So he sent a vine, and he sent a vine, and, and and it gave him shade, and he was better. But the next day, he sent a worm, killed that vine. You know, so and so in response to Jonah's. Uh, to his uh, hard-heartedness, I'd say. He, and starting with verse 10, going through 11 here in, 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 in uh, John 4, it says, uh, But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about the great city? That's from God. That's God's word. Uh, they had a reference here to Ezekiel, and it's just so happened that I've been been uh, studying Ezekiel. And uh, let's see, Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, thirty-three, eleven. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. He wants a revival. They, he'd rather they live. You know, he, he's not wanting sinful people to die. He wants them to, to live. Says, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they did. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of God? 